Alaska starting stage one, 50-50-50, so I have to get the bikes all ready to go. I'm planning on bringing two for certain, one road and one gravel. I might bring a third. So I have a backup for a bike, or just a backup bike in general. So this will be the primary bike that I plan on doing just about the whole thing with. And like, like I said, there, there could be a gravel day thrown in there. But this has been my, my ride since 2017. And it's hard to believe that five years have gone by like that. But it is time to just freshen it up, make sure everything is good to go. So I figured I'd walk you through that, show you what's happening, show you what I'm gonna replace because I already have some things that I know just need to be updated. This year, on this bike, just over 3,000 miles, give or take, somewhere just under 3,500 miles on this bike. And I know just Last year I did cables, last year I did bar tape, so it's definitely ready for that. I will just run through everything that's on there. You can find all the parts spec for this bike down below. It is, like I said, I got it in 2017. It might be a 2016, but I've had it since 2017. It's a Cannondale Super 6 Evo. I don't know if it's high mod or not. I have no idea. It's super light. This one, I believe, weighs in just 15 pounds, as, as you see it. Super fun, super responsive, so let me get to it. I always like to start by marking my current positions and fitment as much as possible. I, I think I said that. So I use this paint pen. It's not permanent, it'll wash away over time, but it gives me a reference as to exactly where everything is based on the measurements that uh, different physiologists have helped me figure out over the years. So in addition to the paint pen, take some physical measurements and when you're putting everything back together, you're certain that it's the way that you like it. Now I am going to disassemble everything I, I want to get everything off the, the bike as much as possible. I am going to leave the brake calipers and the press fit bottom bracket in place only because there's, there's nothing I, I need to do with the brakes and you'll see later in the video I'm actually going to service the bottom bracket while it's in place. So to disassemble everything there, there aren't any really special tools aside from a cable cutter. You need some hex Allen keys. Uh, I was using sizes three, four, five, and six. Uh, most of the bolts are, are, are those sizes. The, and a razor knife. Uh, again, be careful when you're using a razor knife around carbon fiber, but it certainly helps with the, the tape and removing these, these cables. We'll talk about that brake cable and why I left it there later in the video as well. So the reason I'm taking everything apart is I want to be able to inspect as much of the bike as possible and then address any issues. All right, so I, I know that there are some, some chips in the paint, right? Rock, debris, you know, just wear and tear, some light little scratches. So I wanna see if those are just paint blemishes or if there's something that needs to be addressed chain I had already replaced that earlier this year uh, you know, riding on the trainer I had a an epic fail so I knew the chain was in good shape but I just wanted to show you that you should also check your chain wear throughout the season and when you reach the tolerance point make sure you change it it'll keep keep everything else running optimally as much as possible So as you can see, this is definitely sped up. This is 4X speed and overall it was about three hours to disassemble, wash, inspect, and reassemble. There was a little bit of drying time that should be added in there as well, let's say a half an hour, an hour. I didn't actually time that, but based on all the video lengths that I did have. 
I can tell you was that. So here we're looking at the Cannondale extraction tool. Uh, it, it's two pieces. You thread this eight millimeter in there and then you've got this over backing tool and you put your eight millimeter back in and you crank it back out. Very similar to the old style crank pulling tools. Uh, there are some hacks and other videos on, on how to use those tools. I knew the existing headset bearings needed to be replaced. I, I could feel it, it was a little chunky. I do have a picture, I might add that at the end. But as you can see now, everything's apart and it's ready to go get clean. So after wiping everything down with some Simple Green degreaser, I went ahead and washed it all off with a mild dish detergent. And I got lucky. This day in the Adirondacks was picture perfect. Mid 70s, blue skies, no wind. Just one of those surreal summer days as we wind down summer up here. It's uh, already starting to feel a little more like fall. Great sleeping weather, brisk at night, beautiful during the day. And this was a great opportunity too to get into all of those hard to reach places that even if you maintain your bike regularly, you just can't get into. So I wash my chain every 250 to 300 miles using a, a chain cleaner tool while it's on the bike. So it wasn't that dirty, it, but you know, soak it in simple green and then just scrubbing it with a brush certainly helped. Fortunately, I did not find any issues. Everything was in good working order. Uh, no cracks, no breaks. Now this is a really cool upgrade. Uh, I was having some creaking issues when I first got the bike, so I thought it was the bottom bracket chased that for a while, wound up upgrading to this Chris King Press Fit 30, and it has the capacity to be serviced while it is still installed using this grease injection tool. There's a, a video below in the description. I, I highly recommend it for anybody with a BB30. It's super easy, as you can see, even sped up. It does not take long. You can service it throughout the year, and it's just a, a really nice upgrade. So once you get done servicing both sides, right, you, you know, you apply grease in the required areas so that the spindle is sitting on the bearing races with some lubrication. And this crank set just goes back together with a 10 millimeter, right? So you have put the cranks together, put the, the load bolt in there, make sure it's not cracked. It does have a little washer on there as well. Hand tighten it with your 10 mil and then get out your torque wrench. Make sure you use a torque wrench to get it to spec or that creaking will drive you crazy. Great crank set, just prone to creaking. Same thing. I like the Park Tools green grease. I think it's P1000 or something like that. I've been using that for a long time. It's probably similar to the old school fill wood that my father-in-law used. And yeah, just you know, putting the fork back together. Grease all the cups, grease the bearings, grease the crowns, slide everything back together. And you know, you'll ensure yourself some smooth steering. I got four years out of that headset. And that was me not really taking great care of it and riding in some harsh conditions, both extreme dries and extreme wets. Now I don't tighten everything up completely here uh, so that I 
can make sure that the stem can slide around so I can check the cable housing links later. Uh, but having the paint marks on the handlebars here made putting this back on very easy. You can see I'm just dialing that in there and, and tightening these down. Uh, using an X pattern on these four bolt stem plates is a good idea. You wanna make sure that you load each one consistently. I didn't need to replace the brake pads, but I just wanted to make sure and go ahead and do it now before I head out on uh, 50 plus days of riding. And uh, these Swiss stops, I I've always had good luck with them. I used to use these yellow ones all the time when we had rim brakes in cyclocross. So I figured I'd just put them on, on this bike. Uh, plus they look kind of cool. Another little tip that I've been doing for years is just to apply a little bit of light lube to these water bottle cage bolts. It's, I use a synthetic from TriFlow. It's just to, you don't wanna to have to deal with a seized bolt inside your frame. So just a little bit of preventative care now, avoid a whole bunch of headaches later. Again, paint marks. A, a lot of people use the graphite or fiber paste for these carbon on carbon seat posts. Uh, I didn't need that. But for the derailleur hanger, these two little fasteners, I do apply a dab of blue Loctite just to ensure that the thread interface contact is secure. Another creak point possible. Plus you don't want them loosening up while you're riding either. Pedals, same thing, a little bit of lightweight grease just to ensure that they don't get too tight in there and don't seize up. Um, and a pedal washer. Oh my goodness, I was on a trip one time and forgot to put a pedal washer in and another creek. I thought it was the bottom bracket again and we chased that around for a week and then found it when we were packing up to head back home. Maybe one day I'll go electronic shifting. I. <laughs> I only laugh because you know, it, it, I've been on rides where the only mechanicals have been dead batteries or weird shifting issues because the electronics have fouled, but uh, it certainly would have cut the time in half or at least in third for having to do all this extra cabling. But it's pretty painless, cable cutter and all or a pick just to make sure that you open up those openings after the cuts there. Throwing them through. Every year those holes for the cables seem to get smaller and smaller for my eyesight. I'm now rocking a, a pair of reader glasses from the Ace Hardware.
five millimeter. I didn't change any of the limit screws. It was shifting fine before this. I did know with the front derailleur though that I was going to have to make an adjustment uh, because the existing cable did have an inline barrel adjuster and I think it might have been out a little bit. So, oh, that, yeah, so a ferrule, ferrule, depending on how you say it, cable crimper, uh, definitely get one of those. You don't need it, but it certainly does a better job than just crimping them with a pair of cutters. Cable routing is a personal preference for sure. Everyone has their preferred method. I, I'm not too particular, but what I do like is uh, just not having too much contact. So I went with the parallel under, and these bars have a, a little channel for that. The newer arrow cockpits have much more. Now, I told you earlier, I left that rear brake internal cable in there, and now I'm using a piece of PVC tubing to create a little pull cord so that I can route the new cable through there. There's a link below in the description for some tips and tricks and hacks, and you can search YouTube. So you just use that little PVC cable that, uh, pipe that you put in there, you attach it to the new cable, and you can easily, slowly pull it through, and voila. Chasing that down after you've pulled it out can be a nightmare, so you, you want to make sure that you don't pull that cable out without having something to help you guide that back. Yeah, you see, I didn't, haven't tightened the stem yet, so I can check on that cable angle, make sure that I have it appropriate. Final cable, just taking care of that front brake.
Okay, putting in the rear wheel so that I can finally check all of the shifting. Uh, little tweaks with the rear barrel adjuster and everything was good to go on the rear derailleur. Like I said earlier, I knew the front derailleur was going to need some adjustment on the high level. Uh, I was already throwing chains before I started this, so just, uh, I think it was a quarter of a turn. It wasn't much, and then everything was, was proper. I do like that front derailleur. They, they did a good job with that yaw design. And then on to my nemesis. Bar tape has always been something that I, I've never, I don't know if I've ever done it the same way twice, even when I was doing left to right. But this particular bar tape is from Physic, and it's a leather, I don't know, it might be a synthetic leather, but it does have three millimeters of cushioning on it. So not much, but just enough for those long days. So it doesn't stretch a whole lot and it does have two sides to it, so the, the, the center line is not exactly down the middle, and I think that's so that you can either showcase the, the perforated dotted look, or you could highlight the physique logo. I, I'm not sure. Or, but either way, I, I go through wrapping this up using the, the method that Park Tools did a video on and I'll put that link in the description. I think it's a good one. It's got a few other tips and tricks in there as well. It's this uh, over move so that you get the rotation of the tape correct so that it's oriented with the hand grip itself. So on the drops it's, it's for the outside and on the tops here it's so that it rotates toward the rider so that it doesn't unwind and that you're putting pressure on the tape the way the tape is laying. As you can see, right, I <laughs> keep trying it different ways just to get make sure that I get that shifter wrapped completely. And when I was putting the cables in place, the tape closest to the stem is my end point. So I already know where I'm going and it's a thumbs width away. I like when I'm riding up a long climb to rest my thumbs on the top of the bars and just have them up against the, the stem like that. Yeah, so just mark where you're going to end it. Get your nice sharp scissors, cut that angle, confirm it. And that pre-cut tape. <laughs> that you had. There you go. Fold that hood back down. Make sure it seats properly. Looks good. Now you don't have to use this finishing tape, but I thought it would look good. Although it did take me a few tries here to figure out how to get it to line up so that I had the seam on the bottom and get the letters oriented so that they're on the front. And I'll just jump over to the right side and again, I've already done the bottom part of the bar and made sure that the hoods seat just right. Uh, I did have to do this one a couple of times on the top because I just couldn't get that end to line up where I wanted it to, but eventually got it. Same thing, struggle with this finishing tape. And then I decided to try out this K-Edge computer mount for my Garmin 830. This one has the optional GoPro camera mount on the bottom. I figure I might be using some of that for the 50-50-50. I'm not sure I'll be keeping it, but I'll definitely give it a try for the next two months. Just 
just getting it centered up there. Looks good. All right, and my go-to lube is this rock and roll gold wax lube. Uh, everybody has their own preference. Uh, I find this one to work really, really well. Lasts 200, 300 miles. Wipe everything down. Thanks for watching.